OBA Open Bible Association, Episode 30, Elijah's Corner Place of Honor, is on the air. It is about how we use translations and why. Also we are proud to say we are adding an ongoing segment to our shows like Bible Time, but maybe not every week the segment name is Elijah's Corner. It will be dedicated to prophecy in our day being fulfilled. We know there is two kinds of words of ye who are, the written logos and the spoken rima. We will be keying on the written word, and how history seems to repeat itself. If we see the actions of our day, and compare them with the days in the Bible, we should have a good idea of what to expect. Hold on to your hat. Sit back, relax. Enjoy the show. Welcome to OVA, the Open Bible Association. Tell them like it is. Rebuilding the tabernacle of David that has fallen down. OBA, Open Bible Association is a Studio 772 production, broadcasting from our home in Grassroots USA. May Yehua keep you safe and bless you and give you shalom. And fill you with the Ruach HaKodesh in Yeshua's authority we pray, Amen. OBA, Open Bible Association, answering the hard questions and being a bridge over troubled water. The troubled water of denominationalism and division and just plain biblical ignorance. By sharing the truth of the Bible and its cultural and historical context. Shining the light of understanding on a dark mundane post-Christian atheistic time. Reminding folks that God cares and all things are possible with Him. Bible time. It's time to get out this Bible, open up the books, and start reading some scripture, and let the kingdom of God come into your soul. It's Bible time. Get all excited, folks. It's Bible time. Let's have some reading of the word. Opening the Scriptures Our Bible readings today will be from the King James Version KJV, Complete Jewish Bible CJB, God's Word to the Nations GW, Tree of Life TLV, and the American Standard Bible ASV Bibles. This should be a good range of the text and give us a perfect understanding of the text. Psalms chapter 1 verses 1 and 2, KJV, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. CJB, How blessed are those who reject the advice of the wicked, don't stand on the way of sinners or sit where scoffers sit. Their delight is in Adonai's Torah, on his Torah they meditate day and night. GW, blessed is the person who does not follow the advice of wicked people, take the path of sinners, or join the company of mockers. Rather, he delights in the teachings of the Lord and reflects on his teachings day and night. TLV, happy is the one who has not walked in the advice of the wicked, nor stood in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the Torah of Adonai, and on his Torah he meditates day and night. ASV, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the wicked, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of Jehovah, and on his law doth he meditate day and night. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 15 to 17 KJV, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. CJB, and recalling to how from childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which can give you the wisdom that leads to deliverance through trusting in Yeshua the Messiah. 
All scripture is God-breathed and is valuable for teaching the truth, convicting of sin, correcting faults and training in right living. Thus anyone who belongs to God may be fully equipped for every good work. GW, from infancy you have known the holy scriptures. They have the power to give you wisdom so that you can be saved through faith in Christ Jesus. Every scripture passage is inspired by God. All of them are useful for teaching, pointing out errors, correcting people, and training them for a life that has God's approval. They equip God's servants so that they are completely prepared to do good things, TLV, and that from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to make you wise, leading to salvation through trusting in Messiah Yeshua. All scripture is inspired by God and useful for teaching, for reproof, for restoration, and for training in righteousness, so that the person belonging to God may be capable, fully equipped for every good deed. ASV, and that from a babe thou hast known the sacred writings which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Every scripture inspired of God is also profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for instruction which is in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, furnished completely unto every good work. Hallelujah, OBA, Open Bible Association, is on the air, with the good news of the gospel, shining the light on folks, letting them know, that they do not have to walk in darkness, breaking generational curses, and bring blessings to a dark and troubled world, letting people know the kingdom of God is in their grasp, instructing them to reach out and take it, Amen. Hello and welcome to our very first Elijah's Corner, discussing what happens when God starts to move in the beginning, of what happens when good gets turned around as evil and evil is good. I've seen its painted and masked faces today in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Wednesday night, on the news. Hate groups in the distances of protesters carrying hate signs throwing you in on people, blocking people, and attacking them in their cars on their way home. This is nothing more than the enemy fighting the moving of God in the world today. This is what it looks like when history repeats itself. Hold on to your hats it is going to get worse before it gets better. There has to be an outright all out public battle before this will stop between good and evil. Like in Elijah's day when he faced the prophets of Baal head on. Remember the fire Elijah lit and the wood soaked with water. But the fire that came down from heaven and consumed the sacrifice to Yahuwah God. Shalom and howdy folks, OBA Open Bible Association program is on the air. Opening the Bible shining light on a dark world at a time that is needed. Letting you know that no matter how bad things seem to be there is hope with God all things are possible. Thank you for taking a few minutes of your time with us today. Let's open our Bible and either study or just relax from the mundane troubles of his world and focus on the world to come. Our blessed hope. OBA Open Bible Association takes a traditional text, parallel Bible, and specialty Bibles approach to the Bible. Meaning we use the King James Version as a base and work off side-by-side -side comparison of Bibles using different versions of the Bible. Specialty Bibles, we use Messianic Hebrew Roots Bibles translated mostly from Hebrew and Aramaic along with other English versions in order to understand the text as we believe it should be understood. All these Bibles would fit in the one of the three methods of translation of one literal translation, word for word, two dynamic equivalent, thought for thought, three free translation, trying to bridge the gap from ancient to the present using everyday language and idioms. This will work until we can find Moses's and the other Bible authors tape recorders for their YouTube videos. To continue with this segment of discussion, we would like to introduce this drawing AC first saw this type of drawing from the notes in his Thomas Nelson chain link Bible notes. This picture is a chart that charts on the history of translations of the text and languages they rest on. 
We also see that all Bible translated from before around 1950s could not take part in the Dead Sea Scrolls and newly discovered text finds. This sometimes is solved with footnotes and other specialty Bible helps such as in the Open Bible and other study Bibles. The basic history of the English Bibles we use has some keys to understanding the concepts in which they were originally translated and what the text sources they used to translate them from. A lot of this has to do how the Bible was originally handed down to the English-speaking world, which was mainly by the Catholic Church. The text they use and most of Europe uses is the Latin text, as we have pointed out by a textual critic named Bart Ehrman, to which we will post a link in our description show notes a link to a video to where he says this. There are 5,000 errors in the Greek text and 10,000 in the Latin text. Even the King James Bible is somewhat dependent on Latin text. The first English authorized version of the Bible was authorized by King Henry VIII called the Great Bible in 1539. Next authorized Bible was the authorized King James Bible 1611. The authorization was to the king's printer to print it and as head of the Church of England for the church to use it. In America we started to print our own authorized King James version of the Bible which today is really a 1780 authorized update of the 1611 version. This is a part of our history and should be taught. If we would add to our chart another layer of Messianic and Hebrew roots Bibles aligned from the original text to those Bibles we would label it Jewish cultural tradition of the Bible handed down such as the Jewish oral Torah and tradition of scriptures, the survival of the people to which the Bible came down to and from. We will close with this one thought of the added line in the chart picture to the past giving us a direct line to the originals helps to end the corruptions of the Latin and Greek of the scriptures. This gives us the balance we need for our faith to be strong giving us full understanding of God's word in this 21st century and beyond. OBA, Open Bible Association, answering the hard questions and being a bridge over troubled water. The troubled water of denominationalism and division, and just plain biblical ignorance. By sharing the truth of the Bible and its cultural and historical context. Shining the light of understanding on a dark mundane post-Christian atheistic time. Reminding folks that God cares and all things are possible with Him. They repeat how that they might look in this day. So we talked about days of Elijah and I talked a little bit about how that when Elijah he spoke the word that's when you started seeing the opposition for the people and for Elijah himself. Elijah himself had to leave, he had to flee and we know that the birds fed him, the ravens fed him meat. So God took care of him even though that that happened, but it was really rough on the people. So this is the fact that we look that when God starts moving, it might be rough on us, but you know, in the long run, God will have his way in the whirlwind. So we will look at this and say, well, okay, if we have our Congress going nuts and doing these things, there's got to be some kind of consequences for their actions and generally it's going to be taken out on the people and I, I don't see any anything that could you know hinder that except for maybe they may you know, yield to uh, the president president is kind of like a, a Jehu figure a king uh, Jehu so he's kind of a good guy in that respect but we're looking at Elijah as being you know, the prophet and the spirit of God that is moving today in the land. And we see that also that we have the spirit of Baal and Jezebel, Ahab and Jezebel totally yielded to them. And we see all the pre-versions that they brought into Israel at that time that they're bringing here into America. And we're not saying America is Israel, but if Israel was punished and they were the apple of God's eye, I don't see the United States not being punished. I mean, God wiped out Sodom and Gomorrah for less. So 
what what will happen here I don't know and like I said I don't want to see hardships on my grandchildren my children you know I'm elderly myself and it doesn't really speak well that if you know I would be able to run now in denominational Christian they always talked about a rapture well God pulls people out but everything can't be the end time so a lot of stuff is happening all over the world and God hasn't pulled those people out of it I mean we look at Christians in Africa they suffer and they've bled and they've died for their faith and also in the Middle East and in China I mean it has been kind of worldwide that suffering for Christians are on the increase so we look at Elijah's corner when God starts moving which we know that he's moving by his spirit it doesn't really end until we have the showdown between the prophets of Baal and the prophets of God the prophets of Jehovah will have to do this and like I was saying earlier you know we have rabbis they talked about maybe this time that the prophets of Baal will be able to call down fire well you would say well we're not Jewish and we're Christians well that may be true but if we look at the book of revelation that kind of a thing does happen there with the false prophet it's not out of the reach of biblical prophecy to say that so i would have to concur that we believe that the book of revelation is true even if that is you know passed in the first century like some of the people that would believe that that's the way it is it, with their view on end time prophecies they and so not everybody is like pre mid and post these folks believe that uh, you know it all ended in 70 AD i am not of that persuasion you know i can see that if some things happened in 70 AD and history repeats itself it doesn't really look good but in order for that to happen we'd have to have the city of jerusalem restored and we would have to have the temple which are two things that kind of got destroyed in 70 AD which we don't have more of kingdom shall rise against kingdom and nation against nations earthquakes and famines in diverse places but that doesn't mean that god is not moving in all this and he doesn't look after his people because he does it doesn't mean that we'll have to go we won't have to go through hardship whenever i first took on my christian faith i kind of knew that it wasn't going to be totally easy I'm going to stand in the commitments that I made at the beginning. I have to. I can't go back. You know, I may be able to add things on, like I don't eat pork and I try to eat biblical kosher, but I can't I can't undo things that I've done, such as the commitments that I made like not smoking. I I kind of testified about that earlier. I can't do that even if the Bible said it was okay. I can't do it because I made a commitment I wouldn't do it. And that's kind of like what I'm saying is those were the vows that they made and they kept those. Maybe mine is kind of a Noahide type Nazarene. I don't know. But I do know that God honors those kinds of commitments that you make. Even Abraham when he gave tithes to Melchizedek, it wasn't a commandment, but he did it. Did he do it all the time? I really don't think that he did. And I don't think that he gave those ties because he was a priest. Uh, he gave them to uh Melchizedek, I believe, because he was a king. It was part of the booty that he took from the other kings. So it was a uh, kind of like a payoff. So even though that Melchizedek's name was like the Melchizedek, he was like king in righteousness. So there's a lot of figurative stuff that went on there that can be carried out and we attach that to Yeshua. And it wasn't just Christians that did that. It was like they did it to David, that our king forever after the order of Melchizedek. But what was the order of Melchizedek? Well, he was a king of righteousness. 
So anybody that's in that stead has to be a melech or a king, and they have to be a zealot of righteousness. Now, not all the other descendants of David could match up to that type of a level. Yeshua, we believe, did. And that's the important part right there, that he is a Malik Zedek. He is the king of righteousness. And most all of his stuff is based on kingdom, and not particularly the Levitical or the Aaronic priesthood. It is based on a king. So what can a king do? We looked at, in the New Testament, we have a five-fold ministry. And in a five-fold ministry, we have you know, prophets and apostles, and we have teachers and evangelists. Those are the things that we have, and, and pastors. So we have five folds there. Now, in the Old Testament, we had a five-fold anointing too, which you don't hear a lot of people talk about. But you have three that they do talk about, a king, and they were definitely anointed. But they didn't come first, the prophets came first, and then the priests, and then the king. So that, that's the way that it went. And then you also had these things, this other anointed office that Jesus kind of dealt with in his day, and that was that of the judges. The judges made decisions on you know, the Torah and things like that, that they didn't want to take to Moses, because. It was running Moses nuts trying to follow after all these people. So he put his, some of his anointing on a certain group of people. And in Jesus' time, you would call them the Sanhedrin. So the Sanhedrin at that time were the judges. Yeshua kind of talked about that. We said, know ye not that you're gods. And he's referring to them in a judicial manner. And then there's another really lesser known office that was in the Old Testament that we would see in the Tanakh and that was an anointed office as well and that was of the captain. We would call it the captain, the Adonai, the Lord of hosts. It was the captain of the armies of God. We seen Joshua who was a captain and he was also a judge. So he was doubly anointed for those things to lead Israel into the Holy Land, the Promised Land. So we can see that one time he saw at one of the Theophanies, right? The, he saw the man with a sword drawn and he says, you know, whose side are you on? Joshua says, ask the man. He says, I'm on, I'm on the Lord's side. I'm on Jehovah's side. So he was the captain of the hosts of the armies of heaven. He was the captains of the hosts of armies of the heaven. So let that just kind of sink in. Because that was something that, you know, we find, and I talked about a little bit about victory, and we've seen how that works. But that's an anointed office. So we have that five-fold ministry in the Old Testament as well. And the five-fold ministry was prophet, priest, kings, judges and captains. In the New Testament, we have the apostles, prophets, and evangelists, and the teachers. So we also have the fivefold ministry in the New Testament. As well, we also have helps and other things which you can pretty well parallel deacons and elders and things like that. Thank you for viewing today, and I want to leave you with our blessing. May Yahuwah bless you and keep you and give you His shalom and prosper you, and may He protect you, may He guide you and give you that shalom above all. Amen. Hallelujah. OBA, Open Bible Association, is on the air with the good news of the gospel. Shining the light on folks, letting them know that they do not have to walk in darkness. Breaking Birashi old curses, and bring blessings to a dark and troubled world. Letting people know the kingdom of God is in their grasp. Instructing them to reach out and take it. Amen. May. 
Yahuwah, keep you safe and bless you and give you shalom. And fill you with the Ruach HaKodesh in Yeshua's authority we pray, Amen. Shalom, hallelujah, we are so glad you was here with us in this episode, we hope that this program has been a blessing to you that we have given you some time to take your mind off this complicated mundane wicked world, and to take you to the sacred and Kodesh, kingdom of God, if only for this moment in time in the spirit the Ruach heart Kodesh, if you have any topics or concerns you can find our links to our positive solutions, feel no better Facebook page. Drop us a line there. Our link to all our endeavors can be found at our website, studio772.com. If we have been a blessing to you, give us a like and subscribe. We would love to hear from you. As always, thank you for listening. May the Almighty keep you, protect and guide you and give you shalom. Yeshua's peace that passes all understanding. We pray this prayer in Yeshua's authority. Amen. OBA Open Bible Association is a Studio 772 production, broadcasting from our home in Grassroots USA.